Jesus had a very interesting way of communicating truths. He used a system of storytelling called parables. In this week's episode of the Midweek Refill, we're going to talk about the parable of the sower. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman. You're watching the Midweek Refill. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host, and I'm excited to share this week's teaching with you. Be sure to check the description box below for a very detailed PDF handout that goes along with this week's teaching. In it, you will find a full detail of the study notes for this session, along with personal discovery questions that you can share with a friend, create your own Bible study, email it to someone on the other side of the world and have a discussion about it. But in this particular week's episode, I also included a seven-day scriptural meditation and a daily prayer. You can use it as a devotion from one week to the next. And guess what? The price hasn't changed on it. We have a special going on. It's still free 99. Go get it. Go get it. Go get your blessing. Make sure you share it with somebody. Like, share, and do leave a comment. We love to read your comments and to know what's working for you, what speaks to you. And even if you're watching at all, because it takes a whole lot to go into producing these videos. And so we love doing it. We do it for the glory of God, but we do want to make sure that it's actually edifying to the body of Christ. So when you hit that like button when you hit that thumbs up and the shares and the comments and all of those great things. It just really helps us to be encouraged as well as for others to find these insightful teachings. So let's jump into the parable of the sower. Matthew 15 from the Living Bible Translation. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and went down to the shore where an immense crowd soon gathered. He got into a boat and taught from it, while the people listened on the beach. He used many illustrations, such as the one in his sermon. A farmer was sowing grain in his fields. As he scattered the seed across the ground, some fell beside a path, and the birds came and ate it. And some fell on rocky soil, while there was a little depth of earth. The plants sprang up quickly enough in the shallow soil. But the hot sun soon scorched them, and they withered and died, for they had so little root. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns choked out the tender blades. But some fell on good soil and produced a crop that was thirty, sixty, and even a hundred times as much as he had planted. If you have ears, listen. His disciples came and asked him, Why do you always use these hard-to-understand illustrations? Then he explained to them that only they were permitted to understand about the kingdom of heaven, and the others were not. For to him who has will more be given, he told them, and he will have great plenty. But from him who has not, even the little he has will be taken away. That is why I use these illustrations, so people will hear and see, but not understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah. They hear, but don't understand. They look, but don't see. For their hearts are fat and heavy, and their ears are dull, and they have closed their eyes in sleep. So they won't see and hear and understand and turn to God again and let him heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Many a prophet and godly man has longed to see what you have seen and hear what you have heard, but couldn't. Now here is the explanation of the story I told about the farmer planting grain. The hard path where some of the seeds fell represents the heart of a person who hears the good news about the kingdom and doesn't understand it. Then Satan comes and snatches away 
the seeds from his heart. The shallow, rocky soil represents the heart of a man who hears the message and receives it with real joy. But he doesn't have much depth in his life, and the seeds don't root very deeply. And after a while, when trouble comes or persecution begins because of his beliefs, his enthusiasm fades and he drops out. The ground covered with thistles represents a man who hears the message, but the cares of this life and his longing for money choke out God's word, and he does less and less for God. The good ground represents the heart of a man who listens and understands it, and goes out and brings 30, 60, or even 100 others into the kingdom. This passage of Scripture is really, really insightful. It shows and shares so much about Jesus and his storytelling ability. You know, friends, Jesus was a master storyteller, and he used parables. These captivating earthly stories that were filled with heavenly insights to impart profound spiritual truths that resonate with our hearts and in our minds. Now, in this parable that we're about to dive into, Jesus paints a vivid picture of the diverse responses that people have when they encounter the life-transforming message of the kingdom of God. Imagine with me for a moment, picture a sower scattering seeds with purpose, with great intentionality. And these seeds represent literally the life-changing truths of God's kingdom being sown into the hearts of people just like you and me. Now, what's fascinating is how Jesus illustrates various types of soil onto which these seeds fall. Some seeds land on the hardened path where, where the soil is already compacted and it's resistant. Others fall on rocky ground, lacking depth and unable to take root. And then there are seeds that are choked by thorns representing the distractions and the worries of life that can often suffocate spiritual growth. But ah, uh, here's the beautiful part. Some seeds fall on fertile soil, soft and receptive, ready to receive God's word and to bear an abundant harvest of fruit. So, my friends, as we unpack this parable, let's reflect on the condition of our own hearts. Are we like the hardened path, closed off to life-giving truth of God's kingdom? Or are we like the fertile soil? eagerly soaking in every word and allowing it to take root deep within us. I believe that as we open our hearts to God's truth and align ourselves with his will, we position ourselves to experience a harvest of blessings beyond measure. So let's embrace the richness of God's word and watch as it transforms our lives literally from the inside out. Let's talk about the parable of the sower. And this is one of Jesus's incredible stories filled with heavenly insights that can literally transform our lives. Now, picture this. Jesus, the ultimate teacher, uses everyday scenarios to share profound spiritual truths. And this parable is no exception at all. Now, in this story, Jesus paints a vivid picture of a sower scattering seeds, representing the life-transforming message of the kingdom of God. And imagine those seeds falling on different types of soil, some on rocky ground, some among thorns, and some on fertile soil. Each soil represents a different response to God's truth. So think about it. Are we like the hardened path, closed off to God's blessings? Or are we like the fertile soil, ready to receive and to grow? Well, guess what? Jesus wants us to understand that our receptivity to his word determines the fruitfulness of our lives. So 
Let's open up our hearts wide and allow God's truth to take root in us. As we do, we're going to position ourselves for a harvest of blessings that is beyond measure. God's kingdom is overflowing with abundance, and it's waiting for us to simply step into this word of God with our hearts wide open. So let's open our hearts to cultivate our hearts and watch as God's blessings overflow in our lives. So what would this have meant to the audience that Jesus was speaking to? Well, picture this, friends. Jesus, the master communicator, knew just how to reach the hearts of his audience. In those days, agriculture was a way of life, and everyone could relate to the image of a sower scattering seeds in the fields. It was like a scene straight out of their daily lives, like reading the newspaper would be for us or watching the news. It was something they could visualize and understand without any fancy explanations or big words necessary. Now, here's where it really gets interesting, because Jesus didn't just tell this story for entertainment purposes. No, he had a purpose, a divine purpose. He wanted to challenge his listeners to shake them up just a little bit, you know. So he wanted them to look deep within themselves and ask some tough questions. He wanted them to think, am I like that hardened path where God's word can't even take root? Or am I like that rocky ground where I hear the message, but I quickly forget it when things get tough? Maybe I'm like those thorns where the worries of life literally choke out God's truth. Well, friends, this parable wasn't just a nice story. It was a wake-up call. Jesus was challenging his audience to examine their hearts, to take a good, hard look at how they were receiving and responding to his teachings. And you know what? He's challenging you and me today. The challenge is the same today. So let's not just read this parable and move on. Let's let it sink in deep. Let's ask us ourselves, you know, those tough questions and make sure our hearts are literally fertile ground for God's truth to take root and to flourish. Because when we do, when we really open ourselves up to God's word, amazing things can happen in our lives. So that was what it meant to them. But what does it mean for us today as modern Christians? Well, let's unpack this powerful truth from the parable of the sower. Picture the soil in that parable. It represents a different heart condition, you know, like the soil of our hearts. And here's the thing, just like those different types of soil, our hearts can be different conditions as well. Are we like that fertile soil, soft and ready to receive God's word with open arms? Or are there some hindrances, some barriers that are keeping us from fully embracing his message? Maybe it's doubts or fears. Maybe it is distractions or the busyness of life. Whatever it is, it's time to take a good hard look at our hearts and see what's getting in the way. Because here's the truth, friends. God wants to speak to us and he wants to pour out his blessings and his love into our lives. But he can't do that if our hearts are closed off and if we're not willing to listen and to receive. So we need to make a decision today, right here and right now, to open our hearts wide to God's word. And let's tear down those barriers and let his truth take root deep within us. When we do, we make ourselves fully receptive to God's message. And there's no limit to what he can do in our lives. Now, let me share with you 
the incredible lesson we can learn from the parable of the sower. You see, the parable of the sower isn't just a nice story. Oh, no, it's much more than that. It is a powerful reminder of the importance of cultivating a heart that is fertile, that's ready to receive God's word. Now, picture this. Just like a farmer tends to his fields, we too must tend to the soil of our hearts. You see, we're called to actively nurture our spiritual growth, to cultivate an environment where God's truth can take root and flourish within us. So how do we do that? Well, it starts with prayer, earnest, heartfelt prayer that opens the door for God to work in our lives. You see, prayer isn't just about asking for things. It's about connecting with the one who loves us more than we could ever imagine in our lives. And then there's also studying the scriptures, diving into God's word with an open heart and a hungry spirit. You see, the Bible is like a treasure trove. It's filled with wisdom and guidance for our every area of our lives. Any area we can face, we can immerse ourselves in scripture and we're feeding our souls and literally strengthening our faith. But that's not all. We also need to surround ourselves with supportive faith community. A group of believers, a church family, who can encourage us and challenge us and walk alongside us on this journey of faith. We are not meant to do life alone. And we come together in fellowship when we do that, something beautiful happens. We grow stronger. We grow deeper. We grow wiser. We grow better. We grow closer to God. So I want to challenge you to join me in making a commitment today, right here and right now, to cultivate a fertile heart that is receptive to God's word. Let's pray. Let's study scripture. Let's surround ourselves with supportive communities of faith, because when we do, we actively nurture our spiritual growth, and there is no limit whatsoever to how God will pour out blessings on our lives. Family, I pray that you got something out of this study concerning the parable of the sower. I do want to remind you that right down there in the description box below is a free PDF handout. It's very detailed. And I want you to get it, access it, print it, share it, respond to the questions, go over the study in detail, and also pray with me over the next seven days. These prayers that I included in this week's handout tie into this subject of the parable of the sore. And there's scripture with it that you can read and look up to see how it relates back to this particular parable. Well, listen, this is Bishop Littman. You've been watching the Midweek Refill. I trust, hope, and pray that God will bless you this week, that God will keep you. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Let everybody know about this teaching series. Get the PDF handout. We love you with God's love. And until next time, you go with God. Thank you.